guys, Liquid Lola here and welcome to this week's episode of the Liquid Lowdown. I'm sorry I missed last week, life happened, but I'm here now, back with my list of five. Entertainment, pop culture, gaming news from the past week. So let's jump right into it. Coming in at number five, the bad boys are back! Will Smith, Martin Lawrence are coming back in Bad Boys 3. Well, technically, it's not Bad Boys 3. It's called Bad Boys for Life. Bad Boys for Life. Martin Lawrence and Will Smith are back 16 years since we last saw them as their characters, Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett in Bad Boys 2. Martin Lawrence's character, Marcus, is now a police inspector and Will Smith's character, Mike, is having a midlife crisis. They reunite when this Armenian mercenary, they, they killed this Armenian mercenary's brother and this person promises them a bonus. So they reunite to work on this case. Very much looking forward to this movie. Um, it's always fun to see Will Smith and Martin Lawrence together. They're both very funny. They seem to really enjoy themselves. Um, Will Smith at this point is like living his best life for real. Like he's doing so many different things. He's basically doing whatever the hell he wants to do, which is fantastic. How do I get to where you are, Will? How do I get to where you are? You know what I'm saying? We haven't seen Martin Lawrence in a while. I'm not really sure what he's been up to. I'm sure he's going to be very happy to get this check though. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So that'll be very good for Martin Lawrence's bank account, for sure. I'm sure the movie's going to be a great hit. So far, the movie is scheduled for January 17th, 2020 release date. So um, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm completely here for it. I'm very excited. Bad boys for life. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? And... Make sure to watch my reaction video for the Bad Boys for Life trailer. So that's number five, Bad Boys for Life with Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. Coming in at number four, okay, you may have noticed that I'm repping Nintendo today. Nintendo Switch Online just dropped 20 Super Nintendo games that you can play. So basically, you pay $20 a month, you get like cloud saving, but you also get access to this whole library of games. They already had a bunch of Nintendo, regular classic Nintendo titles, but they just released 20 Super Nintendo titles. 20 Super Nintendo titles. I mean, just the nostalgia alone that these things are available, you know, on your actual console, I think is fantastic and that's one thing that Nintendo has by keeping their games by keeping their games as their games not allowing third-party access not you know just becoming a game developer they have this treasure trove of games like from our childhood at least from my childhood anyway in their latest Nintendo Direct they also announced a Super Nintendo style controller. You can buy one for $29.99. It looks just like a Super Nintendo controller for back in the day. Um, it can be charged with a USB charge. And I don't know y'all, like I never really wanted a Switch before and I don't know that I really want one, but just the idea of it, I guess, is kind of cool to me. Like. I grew up on a Game Boy. Like, I had a Game Boy when I was young, and I loved my Game Boy. Like, my little cartridges, I would just pop them in there, and I would take that thing everywhere. Um, so the fact that they are now allowing you to play all of these games, and you can play them co-op, you can play them competitively, you can, you know, pass off the controller if you like to someone. With this release, they have Super Mario World, Super Mario Kart, Super Metroid. The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Star Fox, they have all of these games, oh my gosh. Um, some I've never heard of, but you know, try them all. <laughs> that's what I say, just try them all. If you have the service, try them all. So that's number four, Nintendo taking it back to the old school with their Nintendo Switch online service and Super Nintendo games! 
Lisa. Now, coming in at number three, falls under pop culture, I guess. Um, Y'all need a date? If you do, you can go to Facebook for that, apparently. What? Huh? Yes, coming in at number three is Facebook dating. But wait, didn't we already have Facebook dating though? Like, I mean, people would be like sliding all up in your inbox. To me, Facebook is like so invasive. I changed my relationship status just because I didn't want to have a relationship status up there because I was just trying to streamline my profile. And as soon as I took like my husband off of my profile, I took married off of my profile just because I didn't have a relationship status, I had taken it off for like two seconds and I had people all up in my inbox talking about some, hey, I saw you changed your status. You, you know, is everything all right? Like everything all right at home? I was just checking on you. I just wanted to check on you, you know, make sure you were all right. Boy, bye. I don't want Facebook up in my business. I am fine. My relationship is fine. I don't need Facebook in it. People are tripping. Y'all are tripping. What is even happening right now? But I digress. Facebook dating is part of, it's already integrated into Facebook. So if you're looking for love, then by all means, maybe try it out. They also have a secret crush feature where you can mark somebody as like a secret crush. And I guess it'll notify them that you think they're a secret crush and they'll respond back and if you are matched then they'll be like oh somebody else is also your secret crush I don't know it's weird it's weird it freaks me out a little bit but if y'all are Facebook users and you think it's interesting I would really be interested to know if this is something you think you would use Facebook already has so much of our information Facebook knows where you go who you're with the people around you your friends what you eat what you buy you know your political views Facebook has all of this information and they're already doing so much data mining. That's what it is. That's what it is. We're gladly giving all of our information over to these companies. Um, it also is going to have Instagram integration as well. I don't know. I mean, is it a natural progression? Maybe. But does Facebook really need to be in your love life like that? You know, you have the option to turn off matching with friends of friends if you want to like go outside of your circle. You have that option to turn things off, but I already feel that Facebook is way too connected. We've all ended up on, you know, some friend from back in the days page, but it's like their cousin's page because there was like a party that happened and there was something that was going on and they got tagged in the picture and then you saw it and now you're down the rabbit hole of Facebook stalking. Or is that just me? Maybe that was just me. See, that's why I love Facebook. That's why I love Facebook because I realized I was a stalker. Y'all better not get stalked using this Facebook dating app. That's all I'm saying. Be careful. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know, but good luck. Good luck with love. That's number three, Facebook dating. <laughs> Coming in at number two this week is more news from Netflix. I think Netflix has been on every single Liquid Lowdown that I've done. Um, this one is particularly exciting though. Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance, just, just released on Netflix. It is a prequel from the 1982 Jim Henson movie. There were rumors for a long time that they were working on something, that there was, you know, maybe a sequel or something coming for The Dark Crystal. Now, The Dark Crystal, when it first came out, it's from the mind of Jim Henson. Jim Henson brought us The Muppets, Fraggle Rock, Sesame Street. Like, he was the puppet master. He was the puppet guy. This was a departure from the happy, joyful, fun, Jim Henson that we grew up on as kids. This was a little freaky, y'all. This
this was a little freaky when it came out and it wasn't well, well received the Dark Crystal movie in the 80s it wasn't very well received but over the years it's become a cult classic it was advertised as the first live-action movie to not use any human characters now when you think about that in the 80s you know we take a lot of stuff like that for granted kind of now with CGI and you know all of the things that we can do with computers but back in the day this was pretty epic you know the puppeteering the usage of these of these puppets and the puppet designs and the set design for these for this movie and it was spooky and it was scary and it was like i don't know it was it was just this this thing that was like wow like these are puppets like some of these puppets required six people to operate one pu one puppet six people to operate one puppet. That's what we're talking about. And there was an entire movie of this fantasy world that was created by Jim Henson. And now there's this prequel series on Netflix and it really brings the heart and the feeling of the original Dark Crystal movie. Now this is a prequel. This is a prequel from that Dark Crystal movie. So it's more about the Skeksis and how they kind of came to be. These are those vulture, um, the vulture like bird creatures that are like the bad guys. So it kind of follows them and like their plan to take over this other world. Um, this particular movie is not all puppets. It's not all puppets. They did implement some CGI, but it's mostly puppets. Like you really can't tell the difference between where the CGI starts and where the puppets end. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's like a fantastical journey into something that we didn't even know we wanted. We didn't even know we wanted. So I encourage you, please, please, please take a look at The Dark Crystal on Netflix. Um, yeah it's it's like wow you know Jim Henson passed away years ago but his legacy lives on and what a legacy it is um, very very exciting news from Netflix and it's definitely worth a watch Dark Crystal Age of Resistance just released on August 30th there are 10 beautiful episodes and they're available on Netflix right now. So that's number two, Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. Coming in at number one this week is actually about the Joker movie. This is a movie that I wasn't that excited about. I was kind of like, why? Like, why is this a thing? Why is this a standalone movie? But it made news this past week because it won the top prize at the Venice Film Festival. It won the highest honor at the Venice Film Festival. So y'all, this movie is going to be pretty good, apparently. I love Joaquin Phoenix as an actor. I think he's brilliant. I think he's amazing. My problem with this movie is that it's a standalone movie. DC has been letting us down. DC and Warner Brothers have been letting us down with these movies that they've been putting out. And they're all kind of all over the place. You know, um, we had Heath Ledger's Joker, which was fantastic. Rest in peace, Heath Ledger. Um, then they brought Jared Leto's Joker in the Suicide Squad. Now, I love Jared Leto. He belongs on the delicious list. But um, I love Jared Leto. His Joker, however... It was fine. It was fine for what it was. I appreciate his risk taking in uh, taking that approach on the Joker. But yeah, you know, not necessarily a fan favorite, his portrayal of the Joker. But you've established that Joker in this universe. Batman was in that movie. So you've established that as that's the Joker. They still haven't given us a good Man of Steel 2 movie. They still haven't given us a good Superman movie. Still haven't given us a proper Batman and all this stuff is up in the air and, and Batflex is out and Dude from Twilight is in. Like, DC is all over the place. 
And then they just drop the Joker movie in as a standalone thing. Like, we just wanted to do this for fun. So I gave them a hard time over it because I'm like, why are you just doing something for fun? Why are you just doing this because you're just deciding to do it? Why don't you give the fans what they want? Why don't you actually pay attention and create a cohesive story and a cohesive through line through your films and, and get us the, the saga the comic book saga that we should have and not something that's hacked together you know Snyder cut we didn't cut whatever like give us something that makes sense but instead they do this standalone Joker movie and it's a hit and it hasn't even come out yet it's due out in October I'm definitely gonna go see it um, I guess it's more like a character study of the Joker, what makes the Joker the Joker. I'm sure we're in for a stellar award-winning performance by Joaquin Phoenix. I'm sure the writing is great. I don't know if it's a movie we need, but I'm willing to check it out. I'm willing to give it a shot now. Like knowing that it's winning awards and stuff, now I really am intrigued. Before I was like, eh, whatever. I'll watch it when it comes out on TV. I'll watch it on demand. I watch it bootleg or whatever, you know, but now that I know that it's winning awards, I don't want to be left out of that conversation. The Joker movie is set in 1981 and it's an origin story for the Joker. So there's a lot of material there, a lot of room for Joaquin Phoenix to flex his acting muscles, which apparently he did because he won an award for it. And I imagine it's not going to be his first award for it. Um, the Joker is a very complex character and it's supposed to be the start of DC Black, which is uh, DC's series of standalone films. So they won't be attached to anything. They won't have any sort of... Um, commonality necessarily with anything else each film is its own thing so I don't know I find it interesting that that's what DC is doing when you know when it seems like the fans want to have something akin to what Marvel has done with the MCU and and DC and Warner Brothers they just have not been able to get that right they've not been able to get it right and for me, this seems like a bit of a diversion, but if it's a good movie, it's a good movie and it's worth watching, so we'll see. So that's number one, the Joker movie winning top prize at the Venice Film Festival. Somebody gave me a hard time about talking about puppets and not being included, so. Sorry, Charlie. I didn't mean it. So that does it for this week's episode of the Liquid Lowdown. I'm Liquid Lola. And I'm Charlie. You know who I am. Yeah, you do. Charlie, I, I thought you were just gonna just like, just like, chill. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, I will see you on next week's The Liquid Lowdown. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, I stream every Tuesday on Twitch. I'm also trying to do some other like pop-up streams on Twitch as well. So please turn your notifications on so you know when I go live. And I think that does it for this week's episode of The Liquid Lowdown. Until next time, I will see you later. Bye. Bye. The Liquid Lowdown.